Now, whether you despaired or celebrated following the American Supreme Court decision yesterday to change abortion legislation, let's just picture for a moment the women in Alabama who were sat in the waiting rooms of gynecology clinics waiting for a termination. In a moment, their already stressful scenario worsened because they were told to go home. Or the 11-year-old girl from Missouri State Representative Betsy Fogel met. This child was raped by her uncle, who would have to endure the trauma of either giving birth or find the money and help to undertake a potentially long journey to a state in which she would be allowed to get her body back. Don't tell me that teenage girl should value the sanctity of a fetus above her own life path. In some states, abortion has already been outlawed, even in the cases of rape or incest, no matter what the age of the pregnant woman. It's estimated that roughly half the country will restrict or ban the procedure over the coming months. Saudi Arabian women now have better access to abortion than some of their American sisters. I've listened this week to apparently strong women preach that other women should be more careful or put their own needs to one side for the sake of the baby. Or, as one female American politician said, control their intake of semen, as though she was talking about alcohol units. The sentiments are rooted in judgment about character and morality. But they're also tone deaf to human frailty. Many women simply do not have the strength to assert themselves in a vulnerable situation with a man. Some lack confidence to seek contraception. Some have no control over their own lives as they're abused or raped. It's not enough to say, well, they should have that baby. They should just be tougher. But some of them can't be. Abortion is all that is left for these women once they've lost control of their fertility under whatever circumstances. We can't wag a finger and say, bad luck, that's life, get on with it. Even if abortion is simply required because a woman is not financially, practically or emotionally ready for a baby, that's OK. And remember, these women have not made those babies alone. Too many men right now are standing by pointing fingers and making accusations of promiscuity, as though pregnancy is entirely a female pursuit. This judgment by court justices, positioned by Donald Trump like three hand grenades ready to go off a few years later, was a political, religiously ideological move which will reverberate for decades. And as this Bible-based pendulum swings, it might just smash out of existence legal gay relationships and even contraception, as stated by Justice Clarence Thomas. If you agree that the creation of new life must not be tampered with by mere humans, don't be surprised when they come for your condoms. Whilst expressing my disgust at the Supreme Court decision on Twitter yesterday, I was accused of supporting baby killers and received unsolicited videos of abortions. So let me be very clear. The three greatest moments of my life were meeting my babies for the first time, lifting them up out of the birthing pool and seeing their perfect little faces. It was what motivated me to work alongside midwives for nearly 10 years educating pregnant women and their partners on their journey to parenthood. But my babies and all those I was lucky enough to meet were planned, cherished and loved. Nevertheless, I am yet to meet a mother who didn't accept that growing birthing and raising a child is the most challenging experience that any human being undertakes. Done properly, it is a life of service. Nothing else has such a toll on our physical, mental and financial well-being. It is a path of high highs, but also low lows. Just imagine how dark those lows must be if you never wanted a child in the first place. Asking any woman to endure such a lifetime's commitment against their wishes is, for me, the very definition of cruelty. Of course, even in America's harshest states, abortions will still happen. They will just be unregulated, expensive and dangerous. And women will die, but at least some unwanted babies will still be born. So I guess that makes the virtue signalers feel OK. Abortion is divisive because women's health does not possess the value that it should. You are more likely to die in childbirth in America now than you were 50 years ago. 
and I don't hear much outcry about that. But what about the unborn baby's rights, people ask? Well, I'm so sorry, but they should not have rights. In the UK, a person only exists once they draw their first breath unaided without an umbilical cord. If a fetus has rights, a woman becomes, to quote Virginia Woolf from the 1940s, tota mulier in utero, nothing but a womb. She is merely an incubator, and we can then police her every move, what she eats or drinks, whether she does anything considered dangerous. And then a doctor will decide how she gives birth based on a subjective decision of what is safest. If men got pregnant, you can bet they would be strong enough to say, no, my body, my life, and protect their freedom to play sport, drive a fast car or work a 12-hour day. And we women must do the same. Over the last two years, we've seen a horrible willingness to criticise thy neighbour. We were encouraged to dob in our friends if they had more than two mates round for a barbecue. Wear a mask, stay at home, take a drug, all for other people. And you were deemed selfish if you suggested the individual might just be as important as the collective. Anyone who has seen the world through the prism of a power grab over the individual throughout the last two years cannot be surprised by this abortion news. The decisions around COVID caused a fundamental shift in the relationship between the state and our liberties, the ruling class and our bodies. For the first time in history, healthy people were not allowed to enter cinemas, aeroplanes or workplaces without having taken a mandated injectable drug. And the vast majority of folk were weirdly OK with that. And what did this ruling remove this week? The constitutional right to privacy under the 14th Amendment. It erodes the already shaky relationship between doctor and medic as the state is now involved in that partnership. A loss of choice, freedom, bodily autonomy, and now privacy. Welcome to the future.